people get involved in your campaign they say you know what I love this woman I love what she's doing she's fighting for us um, and I expect all of you guys to get involved with conservative media and be heard today tax April 15th and again November when we take this country back from the people that are trying to control you and make this into a social state we're not standing for it thank you very much I'd like to thank all of you for coming out here tonight. Truly, you all are the patriots here in the room. It's not us, because this isn't about us, it's about you. And uh, you all sacrificed an evening that you could have stayed at home, and a lot of people did. But you are different. You came here to try to learn something uh, and make the best decision possible for the future of our country. And we have control over that here in this district, so I applaud you. Um, just a little bit about myself is I've lived in the district my entire life. And um, I'm a fourth generation wine grape grower, born, born and raised in Lodi. And uh, amongst many reasons why I'm running, I'm, uh, I'm scared to death of the future of this country is heading. And I'm scared to death of my children and their children's children, uh, their futures. I'm afraid that the liberties and the freedoms of what uh, many men and women have sacrificed their lives for in this country, trying to uphold, may have been for naught. Um, with the directions that we're heading and we need to change things and we need to do it now and uh, as a wine grape grower I'm just completely disgusted with what government is doing to my business and my industry and I'm not the only business and industry out there that, that they're doing it to they're doing it to everybody we are over regulated in taxes but one thing I'd like you to know about me is that I will legislate as a conservative and a constitutionalist first and every time I use the word constitution tonight, I want you to know that what my meaning of that is, is a constitution that our founding fathers had envisioned and it was their intent, not how a lawyer can interpret it for a radical pet project of the day. So through tonight, I look forward to getting to know you. Uh, Obama's foreign policy and, and that of many administrations in the past is just horrendous. Uh, first of all, I'm appalled that what President Obama says is our flag represents hostility and not peace and freedom and liberty. And he's more afraid of what other countries think than what his own country that he represents thinks. And I'm personally appalled by that. Uh, Social Security this year is going to, by some projections, take in less money than it's going to pay out. How would you deal with Is that a problem to you and how would you deal with it if you think it is? Well, it is a problem. So many people have paid into the system. One of the things that we've got to do is, is stop catering to illegal aliens and, um, you know, who are, who are draining on that Social Security system. We've got to provide for our own people. But if we were fiscally responsible, we could have full support of programs like this. You know, start with every department that we've got that's unconstitutionally mandated and reduce them down to nothing and then start taking, a, and as a business owner, um, I've got experience in doing that. We can look at a budget and we can, we can make cuts. Sometimes they're painful, but they've got to be done. That's how our country's going to survive. That's how my business has survived, and, and that's what the government's got to do. <laughs> Folks, we live in the greatest country this world has ever known, the United States of America. What I think we need to do is return our immigration laws to what they were at the turn of the century when our family came over here and migrated over here. First of all, we might as well tear down the Statue of Liberty with what's going on right now because nobody has to pass through Ellis Island like our family did, and nobody has to learn the English language like our family did, and nobody has to get a job. They can just come over here and live off all of our paychecks uh, because of all the social programs that we provide to those illegal aliens. When my family came over here, it was very simple. They had to get a job and they had to work because if they didn't, they couldn't provide for their families because the taxpayers, most importantly, weren't willing to do it. Okay, next question for Brad. Brad, uh, what's your feelings towards earmarks and what, if any, reforms would you put forward related to that? I'm on a little, lot of little local boards and some statewide boards that are, that are pretty large. And uh, being a member of all these boards, one thing that we do on every single board that I'm a part of is we vote on things by themselves. It's very simple, it's very common sense. And that's what government needs to do. Earmarks are wrong. 
You will not find me voting on earmarks. In fact, you will find me being a proponent to separate things out. If we want to vote for wooden arrows for, for a company, let's take a vote on wooden arrows and not slip it in somewhere in a piece of legislation. I think if you look carefully, I think we're starting to see some differences in the candidates. Um, I will be focusing on what Brad Gehring thinks and what Brad Gehring will do. Not on what Reagan or Jefferson or, or Congressman Flake or McClintock or anybody who's quoted philosophers in the past. I want you guys to get to know what I will do and who I will be. And so anyways, what I believe is, I believe that the document that our founding fathers created, the Constitution, is a perfect document. It's not a living document. It doesn't need changing. And that document regarding the Supreme Court divided for a very specific purpose one-third of the balance of powers to be with the Supreme Court, with the Congress, and with the President. And that was a check and balance to keep each other in check so that no one party could, could rule and dictate over the other. What we've got is too many, too many peoples, um, several of the last presidents, have completely foregone the Constitution and started legislating from the White House. And they need to follow by our rule book, our playbook, the Constitution. Kind of getting tired of this question. It seems to pop up at every debate. Um, there's there's nobody that I'm going to put my finger on and say I will mirror myself after that one person. I mirror myself after me. And uh, while I admire greatly many bits and pieces of many different legislators, I want the focus to be on me and what I can do for this district, what I can do for you. And so that's where my focus is on. And it shows in the people who have endorsed my campaign. I've worked back in Washington for the last three years representing private property rights in relation to the Clean Water Act. And while I could have a long line of endorsements, what I've chose to focus on endorsements is from within the district. And that's why within the valley portion of the district, which represents 70% of the voters, I have every Republican elected official's endorsement from city council on up with the exception of about four or five. And that's also why the other three combined only have one together but I'm focusing on the district. Well, not only do we need to renew those tax cuts, but we need to focus on ways to get people back to work and get this economy back going. That's what it's all about. And as, a, as an employer and a businessman, I know exactly how to do that. And that's to start with businesses. I was horrified a couple weeks ago. I sat down with a group of Delta College students who their teachers were teaching them that the way to turn this economy around is to spread the wealth and take from those people who are fortunate enough to make it and give it to those who, who don't have the ability to make it. Okay, that, that's wrong, folks, but that's what our kids are being taught, and that's what society is starting to buy into. And that really bothers me. The other thing is we need to repeal, um, we need to get the estate tax dealt with. We get taxed enough, we get taxed on the same things over and over and over. And we get taxed when we die for everything that we've produced. Okay, we need to return this economy to free market principles. We need to get government out of the way. We need to let businesses thrive, and we can do that through tax reduction. We'll get people back to work. <laughs> Folks, cap and trade is, is just the wrong thing. What it does is it saddles businesses, therefore it saddles people from getting back to work and, and improving on the economy. You know, at a, at a time when we are hurting, the government wants to hurt all of us more. They want to hurt businesses, therefore they want to hurt the working people, and therefore they hurt the economy. And it's just a vicious circle that we keep spiraling, spiraling deeper and deeper into. Um, as a business owner, this would just kill our business. But I want you to understand, cap and trade has passed. And it's passed unconstitutionally because President Obama made it very clear, I think it was back in January, that because cap and trade wasn't moving fast enough because of all the attention due to health care, he mandated that the EPA list carbon as a pollutant. That is unconstitutional and there was a one congressman that I saw that stood up against that. He was legislating from the White House and, and we can't allow that. I will take Jerry McGurney's job away from him for supporting in committee uh, the cap and trade program. <laughs> Who has the strongest uh, candidacy to take out Jerry McNerney. After all, that is one of the major goals here, is to remove him from office. Some of the differences of, of what I'd like to point out. 
94% of my fundraising has been from inside the district. The next closest candidate to me last quarter raised 32% from in the district. The next candidate, 16%. There's a reason why I have all the endorsements that I have. And all those reasons is because our district feels that I'm the best candidate to, and the strongest candidate to take out Jeremy McNerney. So I'd love to have your support. Thank you.